Good evening from the University of Tampa. Senior night for our men's soccer team as they host the Florida Tech Panthers. Should say the 16th ranked Florida Tech Panthers. Spartans enter the match 6-7-1 overall, 4-4-1 four, four, and one in SSC play. The Panthers 9-2-1, 5-2-1 in SSC play. Chris Hockman, Connor Moore, thanks for tuning in on this gorgeous Saturday evening in downtown Tampa, Florida. We have a couple of very special seniors we need to address for the Spartans. First, the goalkeeper, Jake Richards, he has had such a remarkable career. He really has. And, of course, Adrian Constantine, Roger Smith, Marcus Mani, and company, hoping to have a great end to their final home game here at Pepin Stadium. Yeah, I mean, pending something happening in the conference playoffs, so, you know, you hope it's not their last one. You hope they can finish off well, and, of course, they're going to need results to go their way tonight for a home playoff. Uh, but uh, all, all the seniors starting tonight, uh, which is always good to see on senior night, and everybody should be well-rested after a bit of a reserve lineup played midweek against Florida National in a something of a shock loss, but... You know, that you open yourself up when you play your your reserves like they did. It was a game to get minutes, and those are games that are important for uh, conference runs and hopefully NCAA tournament runs. So you need to have your whole squad ready to go, and the Florida National game came at a game a good time. I I write that result off. It, it's it's you know not really a result that counts that much, and you know you got to worry about this one more. So playing the reserves to give them some time as you get ready for the playoffs, I think is a is a good thing because it's you know all but locked in that the Spartans will be in the playoffs. So you've just got to uh, go for it. And they have a good record against Florida Tech. So despite how great a season Florida Tech has had, uh, I think there's a chance here tonight for, for the Spartans. They have a good record. Florida Tech haven't been so strong on the road. Big one for sure. Yeah, I mean, since, since they're not going to be ranked anyway. I'm Robin. And I'm Chris. We're the brothers behind Firehouse Subs. The last thing anyone needed was another sub shop. They needed a better one. We built Firehouse Subs on quality and quantity. And I'm the quality. Why my quantity? Are you kidding? Try our hook and ladder sub. Smoked turkey breast, mm. Virginia honey ham, and Monterey Jack cheese. Yeah, all served steaming hot on a toasted sub roll. Our way beats their way. If you don't agree, it's free. On him. It's on him. Firehouse Subs, founded by fire. Demero. Like your pizza loaded with cheese, then have we got a crust for you. Pizza Hut's ultimate cheesy crust pizza. 16 cheesy pockets overflowing with a five cheese blend of melted cheeses. Only from Pizza Hut and only for a limited time. No one else. Stan Hybo Olsen. Zero calories. Maximum Pepsi taste. Tommy. T-H-O. CC, glad you made it. <laughs> Ricky wins again. Oh, what is this place? Iowa, only with maximum Pepsi taste and zero calories. Whoa. Oh. A senior from England. Oh! <laughs> 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 
up above difference is giant. Giant hearts, giant differences, and giant wins. On Jersey Mike's annual day of giving, 100% of sales go to a great cause in your community. Jersey Mike's. Be a Good to me. So that's what they said. Uh, Louis Yacoub, if he comes on. Okay, uh, what's the other weird one? Like your pizza loaded with cheese, then have we got a crust for you. Pizza Hut's ultimate cheesy crust pizza. 16 cheesy pockets overflowing with a five cheese blend of melted cheeses. Only from Pizza Hut and only for a limited time. No one out pizzas the... Number 13, they said, forget the last name. Just call him Daniel Tawasuna. Tawasuna. Sounds good. Uh, there was another. No. No. Empanada. It's Mr. Empanada to you. Now serving up scrumptious empanadas in convenient Tampa Bay locations. Mr. Empanada. Italy, number 18, Marcus Minetti. At Enterprise Rental Car, we listen. And we've been listening for more than 55 years. To customers and employees. In fact, there was an Enterprise employee who came up with the idea of picking you up when you need to rent a car. It was a great idea. At your house, at the repair shop, we'll pick you up. Wherever you need us, we'll be there. Listening, let us show you what that means. Big Enterprise, we'll pick you up. Yeah, I do. But, uh... It's not about any one thing. It's about how everything comes together. How it all connects. People. Ideas, resources, community, everything. Quality of life services. That's what we do. Sodexo. Welcome back to Pepin Stadium. Moments away from kickoff. Let's take a look at tonight's matchup. Chris, you alluded to the all-time series earlier. Spartans, they've had the Panthers number 35, 15, and 6 overall. The two teams tied 2-2 back in October of last year. And as we alluded to, this is the game for the Spartans. This is the must-win game. Yeah, you got to win this one. I think to have any chance of playing one more game here at Pippin Stadium at least, I think they've got to win. At the moment, they're fifth in the conference. Obviously, that's not a good enough position for a home quarterfinal. So if you want that home quarterfinal, you're going to have to win tonight. And hope still not all in their hands. So that's the hard part at this stage of the season. You never want to have it in somebody else's hand. On the bright side, 
it's in their hands. If they win tonight, then it's you know they've secured their place. And you're exactly right. You want to control your own destiny. You do not want to have to hope that someone loses and someone wins in order to sneak in. So this is the game. Uh, officials, Miguel Martez leads the way. He's assisted by Matt O'Brien and William Ayers. Let's meet the starting lineups. Chris, let's break down the Panthers. Yeah, so for the Panthers, we've got Tafuma Di Maria, Craig McCall, Stian Olsen, Erland Eichland, Hugo Lopez, Guillermo Segovia, Segovia, I should say, Brandon Smalley, Ellis Hudson, Robbie Madden, Luca Campanini, and Jason Fesque. And for the Spartans, starting goal, we got Jake Richards, Albert Morales, Adrian Constantine, Mike Sheschel, Roger Smith, Umgad Salah, Travis Foster, Marcus Minetti, Tim Croft, Ezra Nichols, and Alex Schulte Geistoven as we get things started here at Pepin Stadium on a beautiful Saturday night. It's got to be said, these last few weeks have been uh, still hot, but uh, the cool change has hopefully finally come to Tampa. It's November now, so. November soccer means uh, cooler weather, hopefully. Hopefully this sticks around for everybody. Game time weather, cool and cloudy. 73 degrees with 7 miles an hour wind from the north. Yeah, it's always a little gusty at Pepin Stadium um, this time of night. So uh, you'll notice if you pay real close attention, the, uh, the flags can move in opposite directions from time to time. So it can take the teams a little bit of time to settle. Uh, but... Hopefully, it won't uh, won't have too much of a negative impact on the game. Definitely, and our women's team over in Melbourne as we speak, they're underway. We will keep you informed. These two programs face off, and earlier today, the Tampa volleyball team overcame a two to nothing set deficit and rallied to win three straight to defeat the Barry Buccaneers. So, big day for Spartan sports. Yeah, Barry's a great team in volleyball right now, too. So it's a great result for the Spartans. And, yeah, anytime you can come from two sets to zero down and, and claim the win is pretty great. I regret that I, I missed it. I had to do my day job. But uh, grateful to be here now for what's bound to be a good game. These uh, these contests are always good. It was a 2-2 draw last year between the two teams. So hopefully it's uh, another exciting match. Of course, the Spartans wearing... Welcome back to Pepin Stadium, ladies and gentlemen. Apologize for the technical difficulties. Back in action, 21 minutes to go in the first half. Panthers lead the Spartans 1-0, courtesy of the Ellis Hudson goal. Came from a pass from Luca Campanini. Chris Hockman, Connor Moore, thanks for tuning in. This Florida Institute of Technology has taken four shots. Spartan with one. One save made thus far by Jason Fesquia. Richard still without a save. Here come the Panthers motoring down the field. And yeah, just to fill everybody in on what happened while we were away, there was a goal disallowed for offside for the Panthers. Correct decision. It was it was a uh, you know he was off. It was a rebound off the off the crossbar, off the back of the keeper, uh, and tapped home. But the player that tapped it home was in an offside position, so can't give that one. And uh, and then another offside, but that one was saved. And then finally, finally we see Ellis Hudson stay onside. Although right as I say that he's offside, he puts it in the back of the net again. Right idea. So second time tonight, he's been ruled offside as he puts the goal in the back of the net. Uh, but offside uh, finally stays on the third time and offside. gets the goal. So 1-0, but it could have been three. Could have easily been three. And we also had an instance where Amgad Salah was in the box and there could have been a whistle. The crowd certainly would have liked one, but from our consensus, we were okay with the no call as that one misfire from the Panthers. And that's kind of where we're at. So 1-0. 19 minutes to go. Sorry about those technical difficulties, but we are back. Glad to have you with us. Senior night. We have four outstanding seniors. Tremendous soccer players, but even better people. Roger Smith, Adrian Constantine, Marcus Minetti, and Jake Richards. All four will be successful people the remainder of their lives. And have had a 
great impact on the Tampa community outside of just soccer. Yeah, and that's so important. And then also doing great as students, which is important. You know, they're students first, athletes second. That's why the, uh, the language is in that order. Student athlete, not athlete student. Spartans knocking on the door. Stout backline defense by the Panthers. Yeah, Tampa playing with the back three that can be exploited, and we really saw that for the goal. You know, possession was turned over, and it allowed the Panthers to go forward and play some quick football, quick soccer, and get the goal. A fairly easy finish in the end, but a good pass from uh, Luca Campanini gave the goal for the Panthers. So 1-0 is where we're at. But, uh, yeah, the Spartans with that back three. And they don't normally play a back three. They normally play a back four, but none of their seniors are defenders. So it's kind of forced them to play an extra midfielder and created this situation. Of course, there's no rule that says you have to play all your seniors, but, in my opinion, right thing to do on senior day. And of course, in NCAA, you can't always just start them and take them straight off, so... There is Absolutely. that option. Not that all the, all the seniors tonight have acquitted themselves well, so I don't think there's anyone really at fault. They're just a great counter from the Panthers. With the game flow going the way it is thus far, what must the Spartans do to gain an aggressive nature here offensively? Because the Panthers have done a fabulous job. They've gotten instances in transition, but they haven't given up the big play yet. Maybe they, they will. Yeah, I was just about to say that might be it. There's a great ball from the right wing from Nichols. I, I think the first thing they've got to do is just not give up another. Like, that's so important right now. If they give up a second, it's going to be even harder. You, if you watch, the uh, when the Spartans are in possession, the Panthers had all 11 behind the ball right there. All 11 were in their own half. They didn't leave their own half. So it's going to be really hard to break them down. So I think you've got to be patient. You've got to move the ball around. You've got to wait for that opportunity to come. Uh, but you've got to force those opportunities as well by moving the ball in different areas. If you're just going to keep playing it down the wing, they're always just going to drift to the wing and you're not going to get the opening you want. You need to move it around, play it in the center, switch the play to the other side of the field that can draw the defense, you know, they can be too narrow or they can be too far on the one side. So there's opportunities there for the Spartans. They just have to, like, draw them in. And so now a yellow card issued. Clear cut call. Yeah, high boot. And back to your point, these are two extremely well-coached teams, Robin Chan and Adrian Bush, about two of the best in the business in terms of keeping these players together, playing the type of soccer that they want to play. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Chan, they've both been there for uh, 15 years, funnily enough, 15th season for both of them. If uh, the Spartans can pull this off, this would be Chan's 100th loss, so that would be a nice little uh, statistical footnote for the Spartans. And... Bush as well was the uh, South Region Coach of the Year just a couple of years ago. So you got some great players, some great coaches. Craig McCall guilty of the yellow. See what the Spartans can do moving in transition, side to side action. I believe that puts uh, McCall suspended for the next match. It's his fourth yellow of the season. So I believe that puts him out. We talked about this last Saturday. You know, we had uh, an opposition who got too many players suspended. And then it did cost them in the next match. Made it a lot harder. Absolutely. And that Spartan victory that we last saw against Rollins, we actually had a yellow, uh, red card, I should say. And that is what helped the Spartans. Yeah, I ended up with, Rollins ended up with two players suspended from that one. One for the red, obviously. And then uh, a yellow card accumulation suspension. And as a coach, that's, Incredibly frustrating. They pile up. They do. Yeah, you can work around one. Working around two is a uh, is a little harder. So, but we got great coaches here at the SSC. So. Entering the game is number thirteen, Daniel Talasuno. It's been good to see Adrian Constantine getting more into the game. There's this holding midfielder. Aiden number six. They're in his senior day game. Two new Panthers on the field, Aiden Bauer, Marr, and Daniel Talasuna take the field. Key stretch here for the Spartans, final 15 minutes or so. See what they can do. Even if they don't score, just to get a few chances in a, in a Panther territory to build off of when you go into the mansion. Yeah, they've had two shots all half, and I don't think they've had any since the first 15 minutes. So 
They've really got to get back into this. It's been all Panther since that first third. A good ball here with a good opportunity. That is a great diving header to double the lead for the Panthers. A great work. Just great work to follow up the header. And the Panthers fans delighted. That is a beautiful work. You follow that up, you've got to follow them up. You've got to put your body on the line. You get the goal from hard work. And this is the, wor the last thing. I know it's obvious to say, but it's the last thing you wanted. Conceding it, making it a two-goal deficit. 15 minutes from halftime, or 14 minutes. It's uh, not what you wanted. And now it's going to get even harder. We said that earlier. You know, they were already defending pretty resolu resolutely, the Panthers. And now, with a two-goal lead, it's going to get even harder. But a stunning diving header for the goal. And It'll uh, be an uphill battle for the Spartans. But, man, oh, man, that was a heck of a play. You just got to yeah. tip your cap on a play like that. Yeah, goalkeeper tried. You know, Richards tried to do what he could to get to that. But when it's a... Uh, when the player's willing to put his body on the line like that, and I think that's been something lacking from the Spartans. And it was the man that just came on. Aiden Balmar gets his first collegiate goal. And that's an instance where Robin Chen, head coach, says, yep, that was me. Yep. Number nine. Yeah, that's what you want. Henrik Bit of genius from the manager, that one. So, first goal in collegiate soccer for Aiden Balmar, the Canadian sophomore. Only played, didn't play at all last year in his sophomore season. Injured Spartan on the field. Yeah, and the the right thing there from Jason Fesquay. He uh, stood over him trying to protect him from any ball coming his way and tried to get the referee's attention. It's it's hard as a uh, as an official in these kind of situations because you don't have the referees at this level don't have the uh, the headsets that we see in MLS, for example, in in the big international leagues as well, and so. No, it's it's. Uh, I'm sure the assistant was trying to get the centre referee's attention, but it's it's difficult in this situation because you don't have the communication tools that they have at the at the absolute top levels of the game. So, um, unless you're willing to spend big money to buy them for your team, and I don't know many people that are willing to drop uh, I think it's a <laughs> seven fifty for the uh, communication set. Right. I think a set of <laughs> flags with a buzzer in them is two hundred and fifty. So, Ooh. Mike Shessel. Injured Spartan on the field. That's being a tended to. Second man we've seen go down in the box. Checking back in for Florida Tech is number 20, Robbie Mannon. I think the number 11, Salah Salah went down injured earlier. Robbie Madden back on the field for Florida Tech. Yeah, just to clarify, he's allowed back on because it's to replace an injured player. So when you replace an injured player... Correction, that's so was Tampa, number on. 20, Luca Abreu. Abreu comes on for Replacing the number 11, Mike Sheschel. And Sheschel, the injured man, comes out. So Abreu comes on. Play ready to resume. Abreu making his 12th appearance of the season. This is freshman season. Freshman from Rio de Janeiro, of course, came through the prestigious... IMG Academy, just, when I say just down the road, I guess it's a fairly decent amount of time down 275. Nice little ride. Of course, gives him experience with the Tampa coaching staff, because uh, Keith Falk, assistant coach here, was uh, coaching at IMG Academy. We have an update from Melbourne, Florida. The Tampa women's soccer team leading the Panthers 2-0. So it's 2-2 two -two on the uh, men's and women's aggregate. If only they counted the same, Yeah, right? it doesn't, doesn't work like that, unfortunately. Elena her. Barr, Ashley Louisa delivering the goals, coming oh, off of a Mwako Morris, Morris assist, the, and a save oh, from oh, Megan oh, Bromwell. Yeah, yeah continuing, Ready, continuing set, a great go. season for those two women, two more goals. And Mwako Morris, someone I've always been impressed with since her time started in... Uh, in the Spartans' colors. So both programs have a soccer team leading 2 to nil. A lot of time for the oppositions to come back. No. What must the Spartans do? I mean, I know we've said it, and easier said than done, but it seems like the majority of the time of possession has been here in Tampa territory. What, what can they do to string together just a little bit more 
cohesiveness offensively. Yeah, I think there's a little bit of panic, I think, when they get thawed. They're trying to force it too often, trying to get it straight into the box as soon as possible, and that might not be the best option. It might be waiting for players to come available, spreading the ball out wide, making them come out to try and get the ball carrier so that you can get the space in the box for the player on the ball. Well, not for the player on the ball, sorry, for the player to receive the ball. Um, that's what the opportunity is you're looking for here, is getting that space. The Spartans are going to have to force that and force the space, and that's what they've got to work on, and maybe that's what half-time does. They make that happen. Now the ones that do like, all the stuff for like, like who comes in and goes out. Oh, that's under. Oh. Corner kick for the Panthers. So they're looking for more insurance. Uh, it's 11 and a half to go. Let's see, we got six Panthers flooding the box. Couple threatening yeah, to join the party. Referee just wanting to have words here, but yeah, you've got essentially all ten outfield players ready to get involved in this. Obviously the corner taker can't be as involved. Everybody's ready to run in. Just a little bit of change of shape in that little interlude. The referee has a chat to Aiden Baumar. Already has a goal. And another flick on, which is what produced that second goal. Flicking the ball on in the box and a diving header from Aiden Baumar. To corner and then... Do you like the decision? Yeah, I mean, there was a deflection there. Definitely a corner. I'm just intrigued for what's going on now. It looks like right. a yellow card out for the coaching staff, I think. From what I can tell. No? Just having a chat. A complete waste of time. <laughs> if you're not going to give a yellow, I don't I don't see the point in wasting everybody's time to do that. It's, uh, it's uh, just a complete waste of everybody's time, and it's killed. If I was the Panthers manager, I'd be furious. Short corner, which I'm never a fan of, but sometimes they work. But you're just going to play it for a cross anyway, so... May Jake as well Richards. just cross it in. With the know? save, yeah? Not sure I agree with that decision either. I would have taken the chance, especially because the corner right before it, you were right there. Yeah, the the Spartans have shown a weakness on those corners where you swing it in and you flick it out. You flick it across the face, and by doing the short corner, you've kind of killed that opportunity. So, in the end, nothing happens, and maybe should have gone directly in. But I get it. They just had a corner. They didn't want to do the exact same set play. So they thought Tampa were ready for it. In my opinion, I don't think they were. They've proven they weren't. They've seen that play twice before and weren't ready for it this time either. This is the area on the... You know, make the Panthers come to you. You know, you play with the ball. You make them come to the guy who has the ball. You make these little passes. And then an attempted switch. So the ideas are there, which is good. They're trying to create an opportunity and draw players in. Like, that run's drawn a player out wide. But they just can't get that final ball. It's been that backline defense. The Spartans have gotten where they wanted to be, as you stated. It's just you have numbers. you got to convert once you get down deep into Panther territory. So a double change here. Substitution, first of all, for Tampa. Entering the game is number 12, Josh McGrath. Brandon Smalley coming out for Number 10, Tech. Omar Talib. And Josh Omar Talib coming out for the Spartans. With McGrath, also big game, throw for McGrath. 14 for Florida Tech, Danny Berrios. Danny Berrios on the field. Spartans operating. He replaces number 10, Brandon Smalley. Yeah, just too much there. Who advised that time. Abreu. Yeah. yeah, no need for it. I think you had the strength, and then you use your arms. You push the player down. It, you Corner swung in, falls back out, edge of the box. Oh, missed clearance. Big opportunity here for the Spartans if they can get the numbers. Good here we go. Forward. Rojay Smith making a great run in the center. If Salah, sorry, not Salah. It's uh, Luca Abreu playing in Salah's position. But they've slowed it down, and it's killed the opportunity. You know, it was there with, when, the, when the run was on, but now the Panthers have had time to get back. That's it. I like that they, well... I was about to say, I like that they're holding possession and they're trying to do different things and force that space to open, and then, of course, they just kick it straight out of play right as I'm about to... You know, it's been that type of half, really, where the Panthers have just outworked the Spartans. If you look at it, eight shots, four on goal. They've taken all four corner kicks in the game. 
if they hadn't gone off size three t- separate times, we could be looking at a different score. But fortunately for Tampa, a lot of game left as Richards showing off his sweeping abilities. Yeah, I mean, I think if the, the big thing is, I think if you looked at the possession stat, it would be very heavily to, right. uh, to the Panthers. They've just, just controlled everything. And when you control the game and you control the flow of the game, you're going to more times than not win the game. And it's evident the Spartans rushing things slightly right now. Yeah, and right there was a great example of that. You know, just trying to get the ball forward too quickly instead of laying it down, setting something up. And that's why they're 2-0 down. They just haven't created any opportunities. Like, no shots since the first 15 minutes. In fact, I'm going to get an exact number on that. And get back to you. So the Spartans will have a throw-in deep in FIT territory. Nearing five minutes left. Spartans' last shot was uh, Mike Sheshaw in the 25th minute. Seems like forever ago. But an opportunity here, long throw. These are essentially like corners if you've got a good enough throw, and the Spartans do. And that's about this team. This team can get going quickly. Deep throw, looking for the quick hitter. Great work from Abreu to stay back so he could control that ball. Exactly the look they were hoping for. They got it middle in. And Constantine did well to keep hold of that and play it in, but unfortunately, uh, Tim Croft just didn't pay off for that. He was just uncharacteristically not composed. Yeah, a foul for Henrik Nog, leaning in the back of his opponent, so it gives Tampa an opportunity to build something up. But they've really got to change their shape. They've really got to get more players forward. And again, just trying to force a long ball early, Constantine. And it creates this, this just not meaningful possession here. So they might be having some possession now, but none of it's been really meaningful. The control there from Marcus Manini allows the switch to happen. This was the kind of play we were talking about. Switch the play. I'd like to see them do it faster. but it at least creates something different for the Spartans and makes the Panthers think a little more. But as soon as the player's on the ball, he swarmed. Great work there. On ball defense. From Daniel Tawasuna. Indeed. Head on a swivel. Now on the push. Yeah, this is where we saw the first goal. Unfortunately, it wasn't in the broadcast because of our technical issues, but the first goal came from this sort of thing. Stolen ball. Great play up wide, and the Spartans just have lacked all of that speed. That's been extremely impressive by the Panthers, they can run it and gun it. They can turn defense and offense very quickly, and that's that applied pressure has made the Spartans have to respect that, so in return, offensively, they haven't quite gotten into a rhythm. Again, threatening, though. Yeah, the opportunities are starting to show up. The Spartans looking more in this as we're in the final three minutes of the half, but Still no real... Like, they haven't looked like even taking a shot, let alone scoring. So it's a good opportunity here, though. Good run coming. Overload on the right side. The ball. He played for that. He did. Ridiculous. Mar- Miguel Martez not... And now he's offside, so he can't play for that because he's lazy getting up. Just lazy, and then he's going to blame the assistant for his poor skill. Completely unacceptable. That's just... You can't, you know, you're not good enough to get around the man, so you go to ground and then you blame the assistant for your laziness getting back for the ball. It's completely unacceptable. And if I was was Coach Bush, I'd be pulling him from the field right now. I know it's only two minutes till half, but that's just completely ridiculous. Agreed. And this one will be sent over. Mention. And it wasn't even a good dive. No. Mentioned for Henrik Nog. He's six foot six. Don't see too many players of that stature. But he and uses they his big frame well. Scavenger. Yeah. <laughs> it's a part of Norway that's produced a lot of talent in the game. And of course, went to the uh, the elite sports school there in Stavanger, which has produced plenty of talent. So he's got the ability. 
See what the Spartans can do here. 80 seconds left for halftime. Give and go action. Yeah, Roger Smith trying to atone for his silliness towards the end of the half. A few minutes ago. On the push, Morales, open right, lane, Smith. got to pull the trigger. Had to shoot. Had to. Penalty. Yep. Oh my goodness. Why for the Panthers? They were, yeah. there was no need for that. Yeah, absolutely. They, they had so many players between the man and the goal. He's, he's facing away from the goal. The bench is in disbelief. They cannot believe and you, it. And you clip him. It's oh. just, I don't know, like, you know, boots fly in, but why was a boot even flying in there? You know, we talked about silliness from Tampa earlier, but that is just... So the Spartans no can cut the lead in half. One of the seniors, Roche Smith, can make up for his miscue moments ago. One for one on penalties this season. Make that one for two. It's so not a great penalty. Florida Tech escapes that time. And now the clock dwindling down to 40 seconds appear to be poised to go into the half ahead 2-0. Yeah, it's going to be hard for Tampa to... I mean, if you've missed for the spot, it's uh, it's not looking like you're going to get a goal in 30 seconds. But stranger things have happened. I said, not a great penalty. You put it at the exact height for a keeper to save, and then you don't even make the keeper make the save. And he sent the keeper the wrong way. He, he did. All he, he had to do was just put it on, and it was in. Keeper went the wrong way. And I said, I said a minute ago, I, I would have taken him Man. off, and maybe that would have Nine. been the right decision. But Eight. we're going to go to halftime. Two 0 for the Panthers. Five, four. Three, How we got there? Ellis Hudson one. got the scoring started with the first goal, and then Aiden Bauer Moore with the second goal. That's where we stand. We played 45 minutes. Chris Hockman, Carl Moore, thanks for tuning in. We'll be back in approximately 10 to 15 minutes. Stay right with us on Tampa Spartans at that TV.
zero calories. Maximum Pepsi taste. Tommy. T H O. Cece. Glad you made it. <laughs> Ricky wins again. Oh, what is this place? Iowa. Only with maximum Pepsi taste and zero calories. Whoa. Welcome back to Pepin Stadium on the grounds of the University of Tampa. Sunshine State Soccer Showdown. Chris Hockman, Connor Moore, thanks for tuning in. Score at the half, 2-0 in favor of the Panthers over the Spartans. Alice Hudson and Aiden bauer Mar, the two goal scorers thus far. Spartans had a golden opportunity penalty kick in the final minute, just unable to convert. Here on senior night, uh, 45 minutes more to play. The two sides have had 15 minutes to recoup during intermission. Should be an exciting second half. Yeah, unusually Tampa went inside during the break. They usually stay pitch side, uh, but opted to make the trek over to the locker room and go in there. So uh, perhaps Adrian Bush, uh, my suspicion is, wanted to tear the paint off the walls and have a bit of a yell, which uh, you don't really want to do in front of the fans. So no. I think the right decision there to, to drag the team back to change room. Of course, a little late running back. I can't remember who had the kickoff in the first half, but if it was uh, if Florida Tech has kickoff, the referees are well within their right to just start the game and let Florida Tech play with nobody there. Let's recap the first half. Eight shots for Florida Tech. Four were on goal. One save for the squad. And seven fouls committed. That might be one of the areas of concern for Robin Chan. But four corner kicks that were offside three times. Those all came in the beginning stages of the match. Spartans have accumulated four shots. One on goal. Two saves for Jake Richards. Maybe concerning they haven't attempted a corner kick yet. Yeah, I mean, it's just showing how little of the game they have. You know, there's no offsides, but it's hard to be offside when you never have possession. And you never have possession in your opponent's half. And then no corners, well, it's hard to have a corner when you don't have the ball on that side of the field. When all your possession is in your own half, you're never going to earn a corner. It's going to be impossible. So, you know, we, we have this position where the stats are just every stat is Florida Tech. And, you know, okay, the foul count, I mean, we look at Craig McCall... On a yellow, that's probably a concern if he gets a second. If I'm Tampa, one of the tactics I have is try and get Craig McCall annoyed and try and pick up a second yellow. And then, you know, we've talked a lot about how they need to open things up. Well, one way to do that is to reduce your opponents to 10 men, which they did last week. That they did. Spartans returning to the field. Nichols and Morales, the first two. We are moments away from kickoff, the second half. The team's back out now, getting ready to go. The lead in Melbourne has increased to 3-0 in favor of the women's soccer team. Two goals for Elena Barr. Elena Barr had a great season. The group is all there for Tampa on the road in the women's match. So it's 3-2 on aggregate to, uh, to the Spartans. It's not really how it counts, but you know, it's just fun to think about. But yeah, Tampa have to get going early and really score a quick goal to try and unsettle Florida Tech. I imagine that was the message from the bench in the change room at the half. Absolutely, and we are moments away. Let's take a look. See the Panthers huddling up. They're about ready to go and play on the field for the Spartans. Will be led by Jake Richards, Ezra Nichols, Travis Foster, Albert Morales. A few late additions to the field we're seeing. Only Tim Kraft out there, as is Adrian Constantine, Marcus Manitti, 
Roger Smith joins in. Yeah, referee's going to tell the Spartans players to either go off and go around or hurry the heck up. This has been a 20-minute half time. Laws of the game of 15. And worth mentioning, it is chilly tonight. This is not your typical Florida weather. I'm not complaining at all. I'm a New Yorker, so this feels great. But, you know, it is it is 70 degrees right now, and we got six-mile-an-hour winds from the northwest. So let's see how the two teams adapt. They've handled the field conditions very well. I mean, as a player on the field, you have to be happy getting your blood flowing in this type of uh, environment. Yeah, it's a little chilly, but it's not so cold that if you're asthmatic, you're going to have, like, some issues. So it's been okay. Been, a, like, the perfect weather for soccer, honestly. Big opportunity here for the Panthers early. Surprised there wasn't a call for push in the back there. Wasteful shot. So stays 2-0. It might have been a little ticky-tack, but I agree. There was definitely a slight push in the yeah, back. Yeah, push in the back. But we'll see. Still pretty stunned that the referee let Tampa just meander their way to the field. You know, 15 minutes. I think the referee might have been tempted to start the game without them and just uh, let Florida score another one. So the Spartans working some half-field offense. Kraft to Morales. It's Morales, Constantine, Sheschel, Smith, Foster, Manetti, Bescio, Kraft, Nichols, Schultz, Geistaven, and Richards officially going up against McCall, Eichlin, Lopez, Segabal, Bauer, Mall, Berrios, Hudson, Madden, Campanini, Fesqua, and Demari. Spartans at midfield, Constantine with it. Yeah, you'd hope they could start quickly. They did have an extra five minutes of halftime compared to the Panthers, so... No excuse for not being fresh. You had an extra five minutes in the sheds. It's only going to be a throw, so they won't get their first corner of the game. The back line Panther defense has been stout thus far, and yep, not too sure what the Spartans were looking to do there. Well, we talked, you know, last week about wasteful throws, but that might be the most wasteful throw I've ever seen. You may as well have just given it straight to the goalkeeper and said here you go kick it back into play because they've just thrown it straight out so wasted opportunity and they've, they've had practically zero opportunity they had one clear cut opportunity and it was a penalty that was sent wide of the target and then you get an opportunity like that and the Panthers haven't given you many and you throw it straight out of play so probably showing a little bit why they're 2-0 down Indeed, and the Panthers give them a lot of credit because they have dictated the tempo of this game pretty much from to the start to where we're at right now. And they're continuing to motor down the field. Fluent passing and a shot that was miscued badly that time, but the right look, a surging middle player coming down and the pass from the left wing right on the money. Yeah, frustrating from... Uh, Spartans defense perspective because it was so predictable they were just so gradually moving the ball left that anybody could have stopped it but nobody did and then a shot comes away and they really let off by what was a pretty ordinary shot but they give possession straight back and they're scrambling a bad touch lets them off that time like most of their clearances and most of their opportunities to get the ball away haven't been through some stunning defense although there's been that don't get me wrong but it's been through just a bad play from the Panthers. Everything, everything has been dictated by the Panthers. This could be where it all changes. Spartans have numbers. But they yeah, cough it up. Would have liked to have seen uh, Becchio run for the ball there instead of waiting for a pass that was never going to happen because the ball was taken away. That's a hard decision. Yeah, just uh, sure shoulder into the body. And when you're six foot six, you're a little bit taller than the rest. Uh, yeah, it makes it a little, little more physical and pushes it across the line. Nothing really bad there, but yeah, shoulder to shoulder's fine. Shoulder to anywhere else, not so fine. Yet again, Spartans have the ball in Panther territory. 
Nifty passing and some footwork that will lead to a whistle. Now this could be a yellow. That was a pretty cynical foul, and I do think the referee's gone to the pocket here, so I think this will be a yellow card. So that is the eighth foul of the game for Florida Tech, and we highlighted at the half that Your attention, please. A yellow Coach card Chen is maybe Florida Tech, 20, well, happy with that. However, this is an aggressive team nonetheless, so this should be expected from the, this Panther bunch. Yeah, Robbie Madden picking up the yellow there, second of the season. Uh, was warned pretty early in the first half that if he did anything again, he was going to see a yellow in the end. He sees yellow for that. And yeah, I think even if he hadn't had the warning, he'd give a yellow for that. Broke up, that's a professional foul. You break up a, a good play there for the Spartans, so a good opportunity here for Tampa to get the ball into the box. Yeah, flicked on, similar to to the Florida Tech goal, the second goal. And in the end, nothing comes of it. But at the very least, Spartans threatening there. I'd like to see that pressure applied. Yeah, and it showed some sort of tactical awareness and some sort of plan, which I think was lacking in the first half. There wasn't really much of a... I'm sure there was a plan from Coach Bush, but I don't think they were executing it at all. And it shows that they've listened and they're going to try and execute what their coach has told them to do. Of course, now, on the flip side, for Florida Tech, if you're head coach Robin Chan, do you do you continue to, to press on offensively, or do you maybe maybe be a little more conservative here as we're now south of 40 minutes to go? Yeah, I think a, a third goal kills this. You, know, you score a third, it's over. Um, so you may as well press. You don't want to sit back for 40 minutes. It's going to be way too long. Uh, so you, and Spartans aren't really doing anything to make you worried from a offensive perspective. Um, so yeah, you may as well attack. Like there's no, based on how the Spartans have played to this point, there's no real risk. And that's just like the composure that we saw there has been lacking from the Spartans. You know, the composure in just playing that ball calmly back to your keeper, and then having him play a one-two with you. Spartans haven't had, and that's really been the difference. That's why Florida Tech have scored two goals. That has been the name been of the game thus far, the little things. And Florida Tech, slowly but surely, showing us why they're the 16th team in the nation as they are sound in all facets of the game. Yeah, it's been a pretty clinical performance so far for Florida Tech. Errors here and there. Of course, a big error at the end of the first half, but Tampa didn't take advantage and score the penalty. Great technical skills there from Guillaume Segovoy. And a chance for Tampa to clear from the foul. Tenth foul of the game. It's for FIT. time! Fun fans, it's time to watch the That great little back heel from Segovia. Spaniard in his senior season had a really great season this year. But now great opportunity down the wing. This is the kind of thing we've been wanting to see. Using speed. Especially with a guy like Rojay Smith in your team. You've got the speed Mark's to really take advantage. And I don't think they've the really used day and trips Smith as well as they could. He's got that speed. Use him. They did there. Created an opportunity. And okay. Touch a little heavy in the end, but he's doing the right thing. He's trying to get about it. And a good opportunity. And the Spartans have looked more in this in the last five minutes than they have in the entire Showing signs 52. of life, yeah. And that is what they're going to have to do. Continue to increase the volume and just trust that at a certain point, all the hard work will pay off. Yeah, we talk about volume. The other thing they're going to have to do related to volume is more men forward, you know? They've got a back four now. They were playing a back three in the first half, which obviously didn't work. But when you're 2-0 down, I don't know if adding men to your back line is the right call. But a good opportunity here on the counter. They're using that speed like we were talking about. So much open space down the left side and just an ill-advised shot that time. Yeah, just silly choice. Your attention, please. Foster. Florida Tech substitution entering the game as number 18. Morgan but as Goudier. you stated, that is going to be a requirement for the Spartans to want to come back. They need to speed this game up. The clock right now is Florida Tech's friend. But at the same time, 
you speed it up, but you don't panic. Yes. And there was a panic in that shot right. from Fosby. He scored two goals, three goals, sorry, in his whole career. He scored one goal this season, so he's capable of scoring. But you got to look at the percentages, and that was a really low percentage shot. But good work there defensively. That's great work. You earned the goal kick. Your kitchen, please. Entering the game for Tampa. It's so interesting. I love it. Pass up a good shot for a great shot. That was that wasn't a bad shot by any means, but they could have gotten a better one. That, that's the yeah. There was a better look. Right. And so we talk about you know percentages when you have an opportunity. You talk about whether it's a high percentage chance or a low percentage chance, and that was just phenomenally low. The odds that you're going to get a goal. There's a stat called expected goal, and we don't track it in college soccer, but it's this idea that you were you know, more likely to score than not score, and you want to be taking those shots when you have a high expected goal rating. That would have been a very low one, as with this, but what a save in the end. Sometimes you score them when it's a not a high expected goal rating, and that that's one of them. Long way out, but keeper a little off his line. Opportunity there. And a good save from Jake Richards. Jake Richards, what a career he has had as a Tampa Spartan. He just adds a different dimension to this team, particularly from the vocal stance. He, he's, the, he's the cornerstone of that, yeah. that defense, and without him, there would be a lot missing. And then a fun note, that was his 200th career save. Right there, so 200 career saves for Jake Richards, which is a pretty impressive stat. Not many keepers get to 200 so in their four-year career. So great work for Jake Edwards. Congratulations. Thank you, Edwards. That's the uh, commissioner of USL, Jake Richards. Uh, 200 career saves. What an accomplishment. And he's not done yet, of course. We still have tonight's game, and then the Spartans travel to Jackson, Tennessee, take on Union. And then hopefully, conference uh, quarterfinal. Absolutely. The following week. Of course, where they will play and who they will play will depend on other results around the conference, but a fairly good shot. They're currently fifth in the conference coming into this one. And so still a pretty good shot at, at making that. I think things would have to go pretty badly. They would need every result to go against them. Essentially, yes. All of these teams clump together. I mean, it's just a testament to how balanced this conference is, regardless of the sport. I mean, you have these 11 teams... I mean, where they fall at the end of the year, you, you could be second, you could be eighth. I mean, it, it just, it's a matter of how these these one possession games can can fall. And like you said, it's talent does not separate you here. It, it's cohesion and, and togetherness. That's where you, you separate yourself. Yeah, I don't think that Florida Tech have a necessarily phenomenally more talented no, squad no, than, not at all. than the Spartans. But I think that the way they work together and the way they institute a plan has covered that. And yes, there are players on this team that do have that skill, but there are players on the Spartans team that I think have that skill too. You know, we talked a lot about Salah. Um, you know, there, there are players on both teams that can do those things, but what the, what the Panthers have done right is get those players into a position where they can do something. And it's such a good point because you can be a flashy player, you can get the oohs and the yahs and, and be the crowd, the crowd uh, hype person, but the impact players are those team players that do not want to, to get in the stat sheet, so to speak, do the little things that go unnoticed to make such a difference. But. Yeah, and I had a shot at Rojay at the end of the first half, so i got to praise him there. His presence of mind to duck back, great work. Spartans threatening, jump ball, and oh! Yeah, he's going to call a foul there. Yes, but there was a lot of uncertainty for a split second. Yeah, certainly, like when a keeper falls like that, potentially falling over the line. Of course, the ball needs to cross the line, but he was pretty close and had a foul not been issued there. Who knows? Yeah, I think you kind of leave the referee with no choice. It's a tough time for a referee, that kind of call, but... System referee was right on the line too. I don't. I don't think that that ball was in anyway. No. Close, but no. No goal, and it didn't matter anyways as a whistle was drawn. Under 32 minutes to go here at Pepin Stadium. Chris Hockman, Connor Moore. Thanks again for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. Spending your Saturday evening with a senior night. Exciting atmosphere. Panthers and Spartans going at it. 
A nice little thing the referee did there. Um, so in college soccer, for those unfamiliar, in college soccer, you can stop the clock, which obviously you can't do anywhere else. Um, Panthers kicked the ball away there. Referee immediately jumped on the whistle, made the stop the clock signal. So if you're ever wondering what that X above the head is, it's uh, not a 90s wrestling reference. <laughs> it's, uh, it's stopping the clock. And so that's what he did there because... Florida Tech kicked the ball away. So any time-wasting tactic in college soccer is a pretty ridiculous thing to do because all you're doing is risking a yellow card and the referee's just going to stop the clock anyway. Great ball in. Oh, my goodness. What a sequence. Yeah, phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal stuff there. Tampa should be... Cringeworthy. Should be oh, my up. goodness. Good work from Morales, I believe that was, to set things up. But again, the Spartans are getting the looks. They did not get these chances in the first half. Obviously, the penalty kick in the, in the final minute could have resulted in a goal, but they've had several occasions here where they've been right there and easily could have dented the scoreboard here. Yeah, disappointing from Salah. Got under the ball, got it over, but a good opportunity here. Rojay Smith again, showing his skill, showing his speed to create another opportunity, but it's going to be a goal kick. Just couldn't curl it enough. Right thing from Rojo. Rojo Smith there getting that corner in, but this is better. This is much, much, much better. This was everything that was lacking in the first half is here for the Spartans. And it gives you that feel uh, that the field is tilted. You know, we've had everything on uh, the scoreboard end, the baseball stadium end. I don't know what else I'd call it, the Straz end of the, uh, of the field. In between Morsani and Straz, yes. Not too much action on this side, as you said, by the... Yeah, the fitness, the fitness end. All right. <laughs> I suppose. And for the Spartans, have got to feel good, even though you have nothing to show for it. Through the first 15 minutes in the second half, it have, have gotten the looks that they've wanted, just been a, unable to convert. Yes, yeah, this is a much, much, much better. It's, it's night and day between the first half and the second half, honestly. That's good to see. Good ball in, flicked back, great header defensively. Just ran a little far, so it forced keeper to make that make that clearance. Fez quite good ball that time, as you said, Fez quite. But yeah, good a uh, good clearing header as well. That that allowed Fez quite to clear it. It was a good good effort from the Spartans, though, and it's it's they they're really pushing. They're huffing and puffing, and maybe they'll blow that house down. And then if a goal goes in, you start to think about how crucial that missed penalty yes. could end up being. And Fesquare not tested a whole lot in the first half, but he's he stood to the challenge here in the second half, making a few impact plays. Yeah, he's done well in like, even those kind of plays where he's sweeping and getting the ball, but a good opportunity developing here for the Panthers. Beautiful one-touch football. Yeah, phenomenal goal. Great shot there. That was Hudson... Scores his second of the night, so gets his brace. But just beautiful one-touch football goal. sets it up. Hudson involved probably three or four times in that passing move. Fundamental so, soccer. That play all started on the right wing by making that extra pass. And then once you get into the middle and you penetrate deep like that into the box, it's just a matter of will at that point. And Ellis Hudson, have yourself a day, young man. Two goals. Yeah, got himself a brace. Truth Hurts playing over the speakers. Maybe uh, Truth Hurts for Spartan fans. And the Florida Tech of the 16th ranked team in the country and showing that today. And it's just another example when you get the, those opportunities, just how imperative it is to convert. That's the difference. That's really the first opportunity that Florida Tech has had all half. And they converted. A one good shot not. from distance, but I, that was out of nothing. You know? That one, phenomenal build-up. The build-up difference the between the two teams five. to be seen. And then just a great finish Seeing from Ellis Hudson. Second six. goal of the night. Fourth Aaron goal Hudson. of the Icon. season. He's got himself a brace. And you can believe he's going to be running in for everything on the box. He wants that match ball. He does. So how did Tampa respond? Definitely more players forward now. We see one man basically sweeping back, two on the wings, ready to run back. So back three instituted again for the Spartans. They're going to have to work phenomenally hard. And 
and we have Constantine is going to be vital because he's playing that holding midfielder spot. So he's transitioning defence to attack and it's going to be so important through these final 28 minutes. And it has been continuity soccer on display from Florida Tech. Passing side to side, head on a swivel defence. Impressive performance thus far as we have 28 minutes to go. 3-0, Panthers ahead. And for the stat heads, Craig McCall with the assist, his fourth assist of the season. Five in his career as a Panther. Good work from Smith to stay with that. Keeps possession. He's got support there in Nichols. An objection, but the player that would have been fouled, if it was a foul, didn't. Didn't seem to raise any real objection. Did roll around a little bit. I think that may have just been... You know, when you get that... Double contact, ball and boot. Those oh, you feel it. You yeah. feel it, yeah. So corner here, opportunity for 4-0 for the Panthers. Sixth corner kick of the game for the Panthers. It's again headed across, but it's gone out. But that's the play that's been working all game on corners for the Panthers is that header across the face, allowing another Panthers player to run onto it. We saw, of course, the first goal for Ellis Hudson was a diving header from that exact play. A high press here from the Panthers too. A lot of creativity for Robin Chan's bunch. and They've answered the calling today at Pepin Stadium. And Spartans have their work cut out for them. Let's see if they can get going here. Down the left wing, Roger Smith. Great ball from Smith. Just a handball, yeah. He was leaning down. Not much intent in it, but as a referee, you, you have to give them if they fall to your feet. So the rule is intentional handball. Even though there wasn't a ton of intent in that, because it fell straight down to his feet, you have to give it. It's unfortunate because there wasn't a ton of intent and you could have understood playing on, but it did fall right back down to his feet. Fesque drills one deep. He's got a boot. I think the wind is helping him in this half. It is blowing towards the uh, Tampa goal. Eight mile an hour winds, and they've been steady all game long. Breezy night, downtown Tampa, Florida. Yeah, Constantine really working hard. I think this is the, the hardest I've seen Constantine work this season. He's really... Really wants the win on his senior night. Worth mentioning, Jalissa Richardson scores her fourth goal of the season. And uh, Tampa Spartan is leading in Melbourne 4-0. And yeah, I saw the goal here and they needed to keep that aggregate, that aggregate lead. They have to. Of course, the women's team doing a little bit better on the table. Welcome back to the University of Tampa. 15 and a half minutes to go. Spartans and Panthers in a Sunshine State soccer clash. Chris Hockman, Connor Moore, apologize for the delay. We are suffering some technical difficulties, but we should be up and running from this point forward. There have been some good passages while we were gone, but nothing... Very substantial. Of course, if you're Florida Tech, you're not worried about that. You're 3-0 up. At this point, a goal every five minutes seems pretty unlikely. So, looking like a Florida Tech win, but if you're Tampa, you still want to get something out of this, give the fans something to celebrate. Absolutely. Senior night, there are, can be a lot of positive takeaways. There have been, particularly to start the second half, I think the first 10 to 15 minutes is something that head coach Adrian Bush and the Spartans really want to key on moving forward because that was by far the best soccer they played in this in this contest. Yeah, it was much, much better. But since then, eh, it's just been a little lacking. I don't think it's been much worse. It hasn't been to the standard of the bulk of the first half. It's been better. But just the chances haven't been there that were there for that first, say, 15 minutes of the, uh, of the second half. But Florida Tech now just really keeping the Spartans in check. You've got to swing this one into the box at this point. Good work. Acrobatic uh, fall there from Tampa, shall we say. And it's uh, easy clearance. Give him an Academy Award for that. 
Yeah, I mean, I think to get an Academy Award, you have to be good at acting. <laughs> <laughs> hey, some players, uh, not to throw anyone out there, but maybe Brazil's best player, uh, Neymar, <laughs> maybe he could get an Academy Award for some of yeah, his uh, charades. <laughs> but hey, he's not the only one. There are a lot of... And now, Chris, I have, I have a question for you. Uh, being a soccer enthusiast like yourself, do, do you think that as the Panthers on the push here could make it 4-0 let's see what they do they have numbers and shot there nice save by Richards do you think from a player's perspective let's say first if you if you are able to sell and get a call um, does that does that interfere with the integrity of the game if if you know you for whatever reason let's say make an acting player a flop and, and draw the call do you think from a player's perspective that that's like accepted amongst the, the community. Yeah, I think I think I think players accept that's a thing. I will say it happens in every sport. You know, yes. we we see it in NFL, we see it in NBA. I guess in baseball, it's a little harder to do. We see it in hockey for sure. Um, you know, we see it in every other sport. It's not a uniquely soccer thing. Right. Uh, it's just soccer players tend to be better at it. Um, and really, a handful of players tend to be better at it. I mean, obviously, you want players to play with integrity. But uh, but they don't, and as long as it's you know whenever there's money on the line and a lot of money on the line, uh, players don't. You know nobody does. Like in, I don't want to say nobody. I think people have integrity. But we see time and time again in business, people don't act with integrity when there's a lot of money. On it's the line. it's inevitable. In That's politics, for sure. people don't act. So right when money's on the line, you know it's it's not it you don't see that kind of thing as much in college soccer as you do in professional soccer and it's partly because there's not money on the line and so I guess there's one very very easy fix to eliminate diving from the game and let's make it a red card offence mm -hmm. if it becomes a red card offence people won't do it nobody's right. going to do it because yep. nobody's going to risk getting sent off and maybe they will. I mean, we've we'll seen. There's a time like I'll applaud moments like, um, like uh, Luis Suarez in the World Cup, uh, committing a handball on the line, uh, but he knew he was cheating and knew he was going to get the penalty for it. Uh, but it ended up working out for the for his team. That said, um, yeah, it's cheating. It was against the rules, but he didn't get angry. He, as soon as he did it, started leaving the field because <laughs> he knew what was coming. Yes, but he it ended up working out for his team. I have nothing wrong with that. It's the it's the dive where you rah, 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 mm -hmm. about it, um, you know. And it, I think one thing that's going to help with dives is VAR in the professional game. We don't have it here tonight, although it does exist in college soccer. And I think you hinted on a really good point in terms of. It's just a part of the game, and not even soccer. It's just a part of competition to a certain extent, especially when there's a lot at stake and officiating. This is another. Do, do we eliminate officiating entirely and just go with uh, technology to, to make the calls for us? That's, that's the ultimate question. You know, robot question. referees? I don't think you can. Um in in soccer, no, not in soccer. But I don't think that's possible. Uh, you could have a robot running along the line to monitor offside. I think would be theoretically possible. Um, but anything else, and goal line technology already exists, of course. Um, the assistance job gets more and more done by robots. That's a phenomenal Rabona. There again, some great skill from Guillermo Segovia. Um, but yeah, I, I think, I mean, the, the big talk in the last couple of weeks, obviously, hey, with the World Series has been, why don't we have robotic free, uh, strike zones, um, since we do have them on television. I know. And I think, like you said, though, you just can't get rid of it. And obviously not in soccer. You needed the lead official. You, you probably need it. And, I think, I think one, one valuable thing that, that officials do that doesn't get talked about much is communication. And you can, you can cut a lot down. Correct. Congratulations. You can cut a lot down when you talk to players and communicate with players. As the ball comes in, far post, good opportunity for the Spartans. Get it down. Maybe not the right decision. Smith shot is blocked. That was going in. That was three-one. And you got to admire the Panthers 
for not just being like, look, we're 3-0 up, who cares? Let him score. Playing with pride? Yeah, I mean, we talked about it. Goal difference is not a thing in college soccer. So you can see that one. It's not going to matter one iota. But the Panthers put their bodies on the line to block that shot. And it, that was going in. And a shame for Roger Smith in his senior night. He's been game. competing all night. Yeah, he's been working right. hard. He has. And hey, the Spartans get their first corner kick of the game here at the 10.50 mark. And they're that close to getting on the board. Yeah, not a great header from the corner. I would have liked to have seen the header earlier shot at goal and that header sent across instead of the other way around. But it is what it is. 3-0 for the Panthers. And now my next question, Chris. Obviously, we have challenging in the NFL. We have challenging now in the NBA. And we can have managers and baseball appeal calls. What do you think the future entails for soccer and challenging? Yeah, I, I, I don't think that's an angle they're going to go down. I just I think it's, it's best in the hands of the officials. With the judgment, yeah. Best in the hands of, of referees. We've seen it in, um, like, a cricket, which is an example nobody listening is going to understand. <laughs> but um, in cricket, the rule is you get two incorrect decisions, and you review those, and then you don't get them. And we saw, but a good opportunity for the Spuds will carry on after that. Blocked. Not a second deflection, so it's going to be... No, yeah. I'm trying to see what the referee's called here. No, he's just called a throw. He's given it to, to the Panthers. But yeah, so in cricket, you get two incorrect reviews. So the team gets to make a review. Substitution for Florida State. Entering the game number 22. But if they're wrong, Cipanini. they lose that review. Replacing so, number eight. Um, notably, Australia and England Segovia. played recently. Australia made a... An incorrect review, and it was their second, and so they lost it. And then, uh, yeah, two minutes later, umpire made an incorrect decision, and they couldn't review it. And it was blatantly wrong. And the review they used was horrible. It was bad. They should never have reviewed it. But right. it was a bad decision, and the whole idea behind these sorts of technologies is to bring in correct decision-making. It's not... It's not to make teams feel better. And I think where you're going at, and I agree 100%, is so many of these rules are based on judgment, right? So a call on the field is made, right? And the opposition feels that they were, they were wrong in that. It is so hard to go back and look at a play that's bang, bang, and then overturn it because it's a judgment call, right? So... It's in the eyes of the person who made that call. Someone cannot step in from an outside source and be like, okay, this is that, this is that, unless it's clear cut. And a lot of times it's not, and that's why we're seeing a lot of these ruling on the fields upheld. Yeah, the the challenge in in football and soccer is it's a high bar. You have to be, it has to be a clear and obvious error. Um, I, I am a fan of VAR. Like, the whole point of VAR was to get decisions right. And that's what's happening. Um, now, people can debate whether or not that's worth the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Slowing the game down slightly. But, but you can't... But it's making decisions... We're getting more decisions right. doesn't mean we're getting everything right. And I think, obviously, that's Outside. what it is all about. Let's just use an instance. The, the Vikings, or I should say the Rams and the Saints last year, the blown pass interference. Stuff like that where... A call can just dictate who goes to the championship cannot be missed, right? So I think, especially with VIR, most 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 instances that we've seen, I, I don't think there's been a ton of controversy. Obviously, some may be more so than the others, but for the most part, we're getting the calls right. It's in a timely manner, and it's helping the game. I think, I think it's, yeah, there's challenges in that, but I think anything to help referees, I was a referee myself, I, I think anything that helps referees, I'm going to be a fan of, and... Um, if you're interested in VAR, uh, there was a great, uh, great thing the Australian League, the A League, did last season. They mic'd up one of their referees for the entire game. I think it was against Brisbane. It's a Brisbane game. I can't remember who the other team was. But if you look it up, A League referee mic, you'll probably find it. They mic'd him up for the whole game, and the broadcaster. Oh, a foul throw! Well, well, well. It is 2019, and we saw a foul throw called. Um, I just Substitution for Florida Tech. Never see these calls. Six. Never. Look at uh, 
I'm on, on, one I'm on hand, the nine. time I've seen a foul throw called. Um, but uh, yeah, I think they mic'd up the ref, and it's a good insight into how the VAR process works because he referred to VAR and VAR messaged him, like sent. You know, spoke to him back. How he's used to his assistant is a great Danny insight Burial, in the game. If you really want to understand the game, it's a, a really useful thing to do. And I, I would love to see that become a thing. I would love to see that on broadcasts where the referee is mic'd up. I don't know if we'll ever get that because uh, I don't know if the censors would be a big fan of that. Yeah, uh, that's for sure. Uh, but because uh, there's definitely, you know, players swear and, you know, you, that comes through on the mic. Uh, but, you know, we've seen it on sports where refs are mic'd up. Uh, you know, NFL, when there's a flag, the referee gets on mic and explains the call. Um, you know, rugby is another sport. We just had the Rugby World Cup final. Congratulations to South Africa for beating England in the World Cup final. But uh, we've seen it in rugby as well. And I think uh, I think it'd be I think it'd just be a useful exercise for everybody. I think referees get a lot of stick. And a lot of the reason referees get a lot of stick is because people don't understand the game as well as they think they do. Which is Absolutely. I think the overall consensus we're getting at is you need the officials for the communication and the judgment, but the technology will only help advance the yeah, game. Yeah, it's there. And I think, you know, we see goal line technology is such an easy way to do it. The referee gets a buzz that can look at his watch. And nowadays referees use smartwatches. I have a I actually have an app on my, on my watch that works as a referee's watch. So it means I can record yellow cards and substitutions all on my watch. Um, so now, um, referees are using technology just in a traditional sense. You know, their watches are becoming more technology. Um, you know, we've had we've had technology in the game forever, and uh, there's an opportunity to use it. Yeah, I think there does need to be work on VAR with uh, with making it quicker somehow. These reviews need to be quicker, and there needs to be a quick decision on whether the referee needs to go look at the video or not. But uh, beyond that, because if you're taking you know, if you're taking more than 30 seconds to look at it, it's not clear and obvious. If you have to look at it over and over again, it's not a clear and obvious error and it shouldn't be reversed. Great defense there from the Panthers. Earns them a throw in their own half. Panthers looking good here at Pepin Stadium. However, the Spartans still can get a nice takeaway here for their senior night. Salvage something. Yeah, you want something to celebrate. You know, it's 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 hard to lose three 0 on senior night. Obviously, you don't get to pick what your senior night's going to be. It's not like homecoming, where you can deliberately, you know, have your homecoming against your weakest opponent that year. Not everybody does it that way. Some do it against their biggest opponent of the year. But um, you don't want, you know, you don't get to pick what the last home game of the season is going to be. That's done by the league and you know, Flora for for the, the Spartans, it's Florida Tech. But of course, like Florida Tech. Second loss in a row for the Spartans after that shock loss midweek. Florida Tech, they're still in the race here for potentially winning the conference. Obviously, Lynn unde unbeaten, that'll be tough, but second fighting with PBA, that's very realistic for them, and never know, maybe the Fighting Knights run into some trouble. Lack yeah, in fact, the, they would have been ahead of PBA, but for midweek, they lost 2-0 to PBA, their, their uh, second loss of the season. Of course, the Barry Buccaneers won last season. and That's soccer for you, ladies and gentlemen. A lot can change year to year. And Especially in college, in any college sport. You know, you lose a lot of seniors like Barry did, and uh, it gets very hard. Barry find themselves going from, uh, from the attic to the cellar. And uh, doesn't it's possible for them to change that situation, but I can't see Barry. A lot will have to go their way. Decent flick on there from Trevor Stanley, but just can't take advantage and just can't get enough on it. Wanted to flick it up over the keeper's head. Couldn't do it. Would have been his third goal. Of course, played for the Rowdies youth team. He was a 2017 high school national champion, so he's got the pedigree. Of course, both these teams have won national championships. The, uh, the Panthers have two to their name. The Spartans have three. Hence the stars on each team's jersey. Rich history between these two programs. Successful dynasties they built. And just 
again, accreditation to these two coaches and what they've really built. Yeah, in fact, Robin Chan won the uh, national championship as a player back in 1998, won the Florida Tech's first national championship. Of course, Adrian Bush, one of the better collegiate soccer players here at the University of Tampa back in his tenure. One minute, one minute remaining. Spartans, one last push. Well, they'll have their second corner kick of the game. Referee stopping the clock there. Spartans play a down in back play. This has been clinical performance from the Panthers. It's just been, they haven't really looked troubled every now and again. Like, obviously, the penalty, which might have changed momentum, but I'm never a fan of that argument. Um... Yeah, there, there were a couple of opportunities, a couple of shots, a couple of looks, but they've only had... Well, now the shot count's evened up, 13-12, but only four shots on target. Four from 12 isn't a great... Substitution, that could be game zero 21. That's seven for the Panthers, getting almost... Game getting Vecchio. over 50% number 27, of their Felice shots Gisa on Lisa. target. And then a pretty ordinary corner, which pretty much sums up the night, really. Just, uh... The times they do get an opportunity, it's wasted, and unfortunately for the Spartans, it's going to be a 3 0 loss unless something dramatic happens here in the final 41 seconds. Referee being a little charitable, not giving that as a handball. It came off the hand right to the foot, but in midfield, you can get away with it. Ball floated in, headed away for the Panthers, who are going to clear it away. So the Panthers will spoil the Spartan senior night with the victory. Panthers improved to 10 2 and 1 on the season and 6-2-1 in SSC play. Spartans Ten, drop nine, 6 8 and 1 in 4 5 seven, and 1 in six, Sunshine State Conference five, play. 4 3 2 1 A full 90 minute performance from the Florida Tech Panthers, the 16th ranked Florida Tech Panthers playing up to their name and the Campus Spartans gave it everything they had, showed glimpses, a lot of fight, a lot of heart, ultimately came up short. Yeah, I think you take away, if you're a Spartans fan, you take away from the second half it was a great performance compared to the first, much better. And that's, you know, what you want to see from your team is an improvement and that's what you got from the Spartans in the second half. Florida Tech, you've just clinically taken apart Tampa and you proved the record and you're 16th and maybe you go up and you go up into that top 15 bracket and you start looking for them they could probably start planning for the national championship run Spartans you're going to have to produce something well in the next few weeks we'd like to shout out the women's soccer team they win 4-0 in Melbourne, so the Spartans and Panthers split in the two games tonight. The Spartans will play next in Jackson, Tennessee, Tuesday at Union. And then they will wait to see their fate as the Sunshine State quarterfinals a week from Monday. So that will be to be announced. A lot to unfold as we get to the knit and grit of the season. The postseason cannot wait. Hey, get that championship game the week before Thanksgiving and then everybody takes a Thanksgiving. They'll uh, play the week before Thanksgiving in the regionals and then a week off before heading on to the next stage. So... Hopefully the Spartans will make it there from a Tampa Spartans perspective. I, I would expect that Florida Tech are definitely going to be there with that national ranking. And we'll see what happens in the, in the shakeout. And hopefully we'll see you again here uh, before the end of the year. The road to Pittsburgh. That's where the NCAA championship will be held for men's soccer. For Chris Hockman, Connor Moore. Thanks so much for tuning in. Have a great evening, everyone. Florida Tech defeats Tampa 3-0 live from Pepin Stadium. Signing off.